God. Nerve you, Jay? We break your tracks and that's your stats. It's DJ Squirt. No drip. All splash. Nerve DJs worldwide, bitch. Vice President in ATL, baby. Woo-hoo. All right, y'all. Okay. I got a new boyfriend. Oh, yeah. We go together now. <laughs> hey, man. What's up, Squirt? What's popping? Oh, my God. I say that all the time. Everybody kept wondering, like, who you go with? I'm like, I go with one of the dopest people in the industry, right? That's facts. We got to go keep together that. Now. We do. You're my boyfriend. But we got to keep that, you know, people messy. And they don't know what we got going on. You right. know? You got to keep it on the low. Yes. But now we letting it out because we got these kids, right? They don't know about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now now they're going to look under your page and my page looking for these damn kids, right? That's there good. we go. That's... For all of y'all that don't know, this is Mr. 300 Entertainment. Mr. Capital yeah. Structure, yeah. Mr. Your Def Jam, what? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And Mr. VP of the Damn Nerve DJs. Yeah, for sure. Hey now. Well, you know when you do a DJ Square interview, you have to follow the rules even though we already know what's up. Rule number one, Hef. When you enter this studio, because you're on my screen in the studio, you belong to DJ Square. I'm all yours. I love it. Yes. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I have, I mean, honey. <laughs> Rule number two. If there are any hoochie mamas, baby mamas, wives, I don't care who they are. They got to go. They gone. That's Say right. no more. There ain't no cheaters, no home records. We're honest working people, right? That's right. <laughs> all right. Rule number three. We can't just be a beautiful couple. Making all the money in the world. Because we got to get along, right? That's right. All right, here we go, boo. I'm going to give you a couple of tips. Even though, you know, I like them six feet and up. But you so damn dope. That don't bother me, right? But that's a tip. Tip number two. I got a voice fetish. But you already know. But you can get anything you want. Saying the right thing in the right tone. Mm. That's right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ooh, say that again. I'm gonna bury I'm gonna bury white you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, have you know I love it, boo. I could catch you on top of her half. When you say the right thing, I'll let you go. You no know, man. Okay. We still okay. stay together. Now I might okay. kick her ass, but you know. Anywho, anywho, okay, back to this interview. Back to the interview. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I gave you a few tips about me. You, you know, you kind of know a little something, something. But what I like to do is see if we get into a disagreement or an altercation, you know, I come from down way. Altercation that you can make me happy in the event that you need to, okay? Yep. So, I'm going to read you the story, Half. You got to listen. At the end of the story, I need you to tell me how you would make me happy, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. We took a weekend away in a cabin on a hill. Two nights, three days. Hef, I mean, honey. <laughs> Anything that you can think of, you did that. Mm. You did that, okay? Okay, all right. Keep that in mind. Anything, anything. There's no limits with us. Okay. All right. 
it's the end of the weekend. It's the third day. We done had our fun. We done, ooh, wait. Well, we bought some bosses. We make our money. We got to get back to business, right? It's Monday morning, have Our phones is ringing, jumping off. I look out the window. It's like 20 feet of snow outside, and we are stuck in this cabin for another day. Uh-huh. Your girlfriend done got an attitude. Mm. Mm. All day I'm giving you all kind of attitude, making the room tense and heavy, you know, no body language, no perfection. I done got on your damn nerves. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Here's the thing. It's the end of the night. We back on the bearskin rug in front of the fire. <laughs> right? But I'm rolling my eyes and stuff. I ain't giving you no body language. I'm acting funny. So, you pour me some wine, trying to chew me out. Damn, boost, right? Right. It didn't work. Oh, and I don't have any clothes on. <laughs> okay. But I'm playing hard to get. Uh huh. So you need to tell me what you would do to make me happy. Mm. I'm gonna I'm put the music on. The vibes gotta be right. So I gotta probably put on that. I gotta go, you know, something clutch. So I gotta probably go to that Usher Confession CD or something mm. like that. You know what I'm saying? That music, mm. that, that playlist going. Mm. Feel me? It's probably on six or seven, so you can definitely vibe with it. Okay. Um, and I'm probably going to find a, 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 a smooth way to have us do a couple shots. You oh. feel me? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get it. Okay. I'm trying to get to it. Be up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like that. You feel me? Like, you know, the champagne and the wine is good, but you got, you know, you got to <laughs> speed this process up and knock that anger out. Right. <laughs> um, I like that. So, you know, I might, you know, say some smooth quotes or something like that. Ooh. Then, I'm a, you know, I'm going to ask you if you need a massage. You feel me? Oh, okay. So, get you a massage going. You feel me? Ooh. Knock the tense out of you. Hey, and then, okay. you know, whatever whatever happens from there, it happens, you know? Oh, we know what's going to happen, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. Just right. Romance me. I love it. Guess what, boo? You, 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 you have now been certified. Woo! Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, half you done started something. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for that. You want to go away for the <laughs> Yeah. We can get away for sure. That's fire. That's fire. Thank you for playing in my little madness. It's real fun. Break to ice. Now we yep. know what to do and what to expect. You know, I'll call you after the interview and find out what will make you happy. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first. But anyway, <laughs> all right, we know you're Superman. Go ahead and shoot out your social media so people can follow you, huh? Uh, on Twitter, it's B I G H E F F. On Instagram, it's Big Heaven Midwest Fresh. I've officially been squirtified. Yes, you have. Woo! That's dope. Well, UrbanCityRadioStation.com is about bringing people together, showing them who you are, what you're made of, sharing your challenges, your struggles, and your success so that you can be an inspiration to someone else. Right? Right. So, these next questions are designed to get to know you, where you're from, because I feel that those life experiences can be a great inspiration to our youth growing up so that they can be inspired to continue. Well, I used to say kids, but I say adults because I know some 50-year-olds can learn from some 10-year-olds, so whatever. Just people. All right? Mm -hmm. All right, Hev. What's, where are you from, boo? I was born in Chicago, but I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, now, my hometown. Yeah. I should have kidnapped you a long time ago. I mean, oops, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that. All right. Question number two. How many siblings did you grow up with in the household? I grew up with um, an older brother and a younger brother. Stop it. I'm a nerd. I'm a cute family. nerd, but I'm a nerd, right? Uh -huh. well, I did my homework and I studied. I said, hmm, all these people that I interviewed that are so dope that's jumping out here, conquering life. I said, what number child were they? Like, how did they grow up? And I learned that the oldest, the middle, and the only children were the ones who were majorly successful. So you fit my theory. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I think being in the middle, you just gotta, it it, t it teaches you the balance and the work ethic to, uh, you gotta, you know, you're not the baby no more and then right. you're not the firstborn. So you gotta right. work hard. 
And I you think learn. that's where I got my yeah, that's where I got my work ethic from. You learn from the older one what to do and what not to do, and then you taught the other one what to do. You give it so you have more yeah. responsibility. That's that's how I came up with that conclusion. Oh, that's dope. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I like to really share this question. If, if there's any challenges that you may have experienced in this question, please share. It might help somebody. You know, some kids, okay. they, they think it's the end of the world. We got eight-year-olds killing themselves, huh? They think it's the end of the world because they got a whooping about putting blue crayon on the wall, you know? And if they see someone like you that's so successful that survived that ass whooping <laughs> from that crayon on the wall, they may be inspired to continue. So, how was school for you? I love school. I ain't gonna lie. I, I was popping in school, so I was good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, th I think like um, school teaches you the structure and the fundamentals to uh, like about like follow up and teach you, you know what I'm saying? Like they just teach you the fundamentals. So, and then it's up to you to apply and put your creativity into, you know, what, they, what they got going on. Because you got to be, a, you know, the social, you know, you got people that's book smart, that can read a book and build a house, but they can't get along with people. So it makes them kind of invaluable, you know? So Yeah, like I, I've been to, um, I speak at a lot of, like a lot of colleges mm -hmm. and, you know, like a lot of tech schools and stuff like that. And some of these kids don't have like communication skills. They have like all the book smart, they can write up a theory, all that kind of stuff, but they can't communicate with each other. So it's real odd. Oh. So, right. you know, like I, I just learned to apply myself into different like situations. And mm -hmm. that's like one of my strengths, just analyze the room and then I could put myself in any position. Mm -hmm. But you really do have a nice voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we got to hurry up with this interview. Nah, I just playing. <laughs> all right, all right, Hev. Did you grow up with mom and dad in the home or just mom? Uh mom and then i have a stepfather that, that raised me so you had a male figure no that's that's what's important right there that male figure makes a difference awesome awesome i have everybody knows that every successful person an artist a business owner whatever who's really gung-ho out here they've had some type of experience as a child right so let's take it back to three four five six years old they've had some type of influence experience something that encouraged them to be who they are today do you have a story or incident that has made you be this great mogul and DJ Squirt's boyfriend? Like anything? You know what? Like one of the uh, music wise, like one of the first key figures that I met was Steve Lobel. And he ended up becoming a mentor to me. So I was in Cleveland and, you know, like there wasn't that many outlets in Cleveland. So like Bone was like the outlet to, to be a part of. So I used to like literally call their office like eight times a day just trying to be a part of it you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. one day like flesh called me back and was like hey man you know i noticed you got we have a lot of messages from you like i would literally call every day okay and, uh, so ended up doing like a lot of the mo thugs projects and then a lot of the solo projects from bone and that you know but that was that that initial re uh i ended up taking we was at a club and i ended up taking steve to go get food and of course, you know, I was just, he was just like, man, I'm hungry. I got to go get something to eat. So just from that initial uh, introduction, I was like, I just kind of follow his career and some of the business deals that he made. And it just let me know that I wanted to be a part of the industry. And it gave me kind of like the blueprint and a relationship builder like that. Like, you know, okay. like, man, you know, he, he a millionaire manager. So I was like, man, how you make a million dollars managing? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I just started putting together situations and deals. And then a lot of the artists that I liked, they was unsigned at the time. And I, I um, you know, just started talking to different position. record labels about yeah. those art artists. And, you know, some of them went on to be gold and platinum artists. And, you know, we're right. here today. Can you manage me? <laughs> 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 I'm a handful. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> that is really dope. Look how you you research. You was inspired by someone. You researched them. You built a relationship with them to be successful. That's amazing because those are the things that I teach um, the kids. Yeah, like um, even on the education side, like, you know, there wasn't nobody that like in my area that I really could look up to. So it's like, you know, the only person I really knew was like of was like Bone and Gerald Levert. So, 
you know, when I got okay, I started going back into like the high schools and just telling them like about the different jobs that they could do in music to still be a part of the industry. That's dope. And, and, um, even Steve, like to this day, like we, you know, real good friends and he's doing his we work in university. And so I started Q time, the Taylor Institute of Music and Education. So I go back and that, you know, like next year I'm gonna start doing like scholarships, like three or four scholarships and stuff like that for high school students. Have nobody would know you do all of that. Yeah. That is amazing. I'm in love. <laughs> Cause you know, when I get to school up, you know, you gotta come speak to the kids for me, right? Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. Oh, yeah. I'm always down. I we spoke in Atlanta. Out. I spoke at um, <laughs> I did the Boys and Girls Club a couple times in Atlanta, and um, you know, I went to a couple high schools with an artist. So you know, I'm always down to do stuff like that. Definitely, I know you're gonna be in trouble if you visit the A again without connecting with me. We're gonna have problems. Yeah, for sure. I gotta uh. I gotta definitely get better on my communication. But yeah. we got a studio down there, so I'm always down there recording and stuff. No problem. Well, that's, man, Hef, you are really dope. Like, I wouldn't have, I didn't know that. I didn't know all that. You know? Uh, yeah. I, I'm always stuck. Like, Friday, we doing the uh, same thing in Cleveland, doing the Boys and Girls Club Toy Drive. I do that every year called Toys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. which actually spawned from Atlanta. Um, me and Casper uh, started it. Um, and then, uh, you know, got a holiday party coming up and all that good stuff. But I always like to give back, especially this time of year. But like we blessed and, you know, That's like I get to talk about music for a, a job. So I can't never That is that. a recipe to yeah. success. Is you get blessed and you bless it back. Like, but you can't, you can't pick and choose who to bless. So that's why you just put it out there. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, you can I, pick I want, me though. <laughs> yeah. No, I want. I mean, I really do want to like that message. If you t if you share this with the kids, like, you really can become whatever you want. Just put that energy into the universe, and and, and then find figure out ways to to bring that into life. Bring put it in fruition. And you know, the main thing is like the people that you surround yourself with. The energy that you attract and give out is going to be what it is and then come up with a game plan to um right. you know put just to make action. things happen so put it into action there you go yep. that's what i'm doing that's what i do here boo i love it oh my god so look so look for those that may not know you know this is a big world it's a whole wide world and you know my radio station is global i got people from everywhere hitting me up so this is what i would like for you to do I would like you to run down your accolades so they understand exactly the type of people you've been dealing with and the things that you've accomplished, if you don't mind going through that. Oh, um, 01, back in 01, geez, man, 01, uh, started working at Land Speed Records, put out the first 50 Cent Project, 02, started working at Shady Records. You know, that was the whole Eminem D12 era. 05, started working at E1, which is known as Koch Records. So did projects with Jim Jones, Slim Thug, BG, DJ Khaled, DJ Unk. 06, I started some called the Ohio Hip Hop Awards. Uh, DP of the Nerve DJs. We got 2,500 DJs all around the country. Worked at Epic Records for a little bit. Then started working at Def Jam. Mm -hmm. and start working at 300 so 300 mm -hmm. you know had a big year last year Megan Thee Stallion YK Osiris and then I started my own label my own imprint label called Capital Structure and I signed an artist DJ Ryan Wolf and I signed Ty Bree, and I did a joint venture for Ty Bree with RCA that's the thing but okay okay so look all these things you've accomplished I know you're not finished okay no, 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 no you're not good. done no, not yet. So right oh, now I'm working on like um, I'm working on starting like a a, a writing and producing team, and then uh, I got a cleaning company that I started a year ago, uh, mm. and then um, I'm working on a couple like just getting into like television and film and stuff like that. So I got a cooking TV show that I'm working on, and then also like. I want to start producing more documentaries and stuff like that on other people that that inspired me that you know they can tell yeah. their story as well. That's dope. So, do you cook? A little bit. I can't. I can't tell everybody that because the, the girls never they never want to leave me. They know you can cook. 
they ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> they, they don't have nothing to do with us. Have come on now, you can cook. Yeah, for sure. I got this fantasy. You want to hear it? <laughs> what is it, man? <laughs> Remember the Baby Boy movie? Yeah. Uh -huh. I want breakfast, Baby Boy style. <laughs> Kool-Aid, <laughs> scrambled eggs, and Timberland boots. That's it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. I'm messing with you, Heather. <laughs> that is a real fantasy. But anyway. Okay, so look. This is my $30 billion question. Okay. Mm. All right. Let's just say your girlfriend, DJ Squirt, uh -huh. hypothetically speaking, went to Magic City. Woo-hoo. I was twerking for you, boo. Right? Check it out. Yes, I mean, I was balling. No, I don't touch nobody but you. But anyway, I was twerking. I was just in Magic City last week, too. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you, damn. But I was, <laughs> I was in Magic City. I made a whole lot of money, but I gave you a $30. Okay, that bag. Big bag. Gave, me gave a, you a, a big little, bag. <laughs> you already know what it is. As soon as they walk up to you, you was mugging them. No, I'm good. Oh. Squirt got you together, okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. What would you do, or what kinds of things would you do to help change this world with that money? Mm. Um, I'll probably set up uh, a lot more uh, information centers and, and learning centers about, you know, financial wealth. And I would probably buy a couple cities and a couple islands. Okay. For Ooh. sure. Wow. That's dope. Damn, that's dope. I ain't never heard of that. Okay. Hmm. I have. Oh my God. Oh my God. You are the man. So look. One more thing to get everybody to know. Anything else about you? I'm giving you the floor. You know, I use this to teach these children to give them inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. This school is gonna be up really soon. What would you say to our youth or people in general today about being successful and, and anything you want to say? The floor is yours. Um, man, just have a have goals. Just have a, a crazy work ethic to get to it. And then once you get to it, then never stop working. Like never stop working on your goals. Never stop creating and getting better. Like you know, and um, you know, like even though you know you might come from a bad place, that don't that don't define you. Like you can't be defined by that. And you know, just give yourself an opportunity to win. Like a lot of people block their blessings and stuff like that, but you gotta give yourself an opportunity to win and change your life. And if you change your life, you can change your family's life. So change the narrative. That's fire. Wow. You know I love you. <laughs> okay, look. <laughs> okay, look. So any shout outs, anything you wanna say to people that are important to you in your life or whatever you need to say before we shut this down? Uh, man, I, guess I always want to, you know, one of the things that I, I'm really a true believer on is having like great mentorship. So I got to give a shout out to my mentors who helped guide me, uh, who helped guide me through this whole journey. Uh, so shout out to D Sign Around, shout out to D Train, shout out to Kevin Lyles, shout out to uh, Michael Meinstein, and um, just great people that, you know, surround yourself around great people and, you know, the world can become whatever you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, shout out to my Nerve DJ, shout out to my Def Jam family, shout out to uh, my 300 family for sure, and um, my whole team, Capital Structure and District 18. And we're here, man. You know, we're gonna make some great things happen for the for the 21. So you're gonna be shocked. That's fire. I am so honored to have you on here. You, I've been chasing you forever. For you to take the time out is amazing. People don't see the value in time. Time is very valuable. But um, thank you again, Hev. You know your girlfriend always got your back. Hey, now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. It's been another dope-ass interview with one of the best in the industry. My boo. Y'all better watch out. I'm a fighter. I came right down from the gutter. I'm a fighter, OK? <laughs> But <laughs> he has wrapped it all up. It's all fire. Um, make sure that you download my app. I am on Google Play iTunes devices, the Urban TV Radio app. You can search it, UTRS. Um, I play all independent artists in my radio station, urbancityradiostation.com. We are here for you. Upload your music if it's dope. I only play the best. I will put you on rotation for free for 14 days. And you can check out Fiverr. 
five dollars to get your song in. That's it. We can work with something, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the end of this part. Hey, good night, boo. <laughs> yeah, I got haters. Yeah, I got haters, but they don't be stressing me. Said they got problems, but they ain't addressing me. Don't come with that flexion, no question. We can gon' be from a whip of the rest of me. Stretch it out for me, 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 stretch it out for me. Stretch it out for me, 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 stretch it out for me.